Okay, let's talk about the difference between central neurons and peripheral neurons. They're born from different uh, uh, populations of progenitors, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next section. But um, there, are, there are two ways to look at this, and, I, and I, that's what I want to go over in this, uh, in this lecture. So this is uh, a top-down view of the brain, and you can see that it's covered in dura. That same dura covers... Uh, this is the back end of the spinal cord, and here's the dura. This, this and this are the same thing. The dura even goes out along the optic nerve and then covers the retina, and then as it moves forward, it merges, it becomes the sclera of the eye. So the dura is covering the entire central nervous system. Any neuron, any neuron that has its cell body within the central nervous system is a central neuron. Any neuron that has its cell body in the periphery is a peripheral neuron. So all neurons are central except for sensory ganglion neurons, autonomic ganglion neurons, and enteric nervous system neurons. In the case of both the central neuro some central neurons, motor neurons, and autonomic preganglionic neurons, these neurons send a process into the periphery. So they're not totally contained within the central nervous system, but they have a cell body in the, in the central nervous system. In the case of the primary, uh, of these sensory neurons, they send a process into the central nervous system and so even though they're peripheral neurons, they also contact the, the central nervous system. So we can think of why is it important to consider these peripheral neurons and these central neurons? Because their developmental origin gives them a molecular vulnerability that is specific to the periphery or to the, or to the central nervous system. So we're going to see in a little bit a disease that affects uh, peripheral nervous system development, and that is going to affect these primary afferents, but it's not going to affect these motor neurons, even though the motor neurons send an axon into the periphery. Another way in which the periphery is vulnerable and the central nervous system is not is that the periphery can get, can have, um, Infectious agents can have access to the periphery. Now here, there's a funny little thing that happens. So let's say you're, for example, a polio virus. Well, polio viruses are what are called neurotrophic. They like neurons. They're, they're fed by neurons. And so polio virus gets in, and it, it finds this synaptic terminal that's coming from a motor neuron. No one told this polio virus that this is a central neuron hands off and so it hops in to this motor neuron synaptic terminal that's on the skeletal muscle and then it just basically takes a trojan horse of, um, approach it goes right down the axon of the motor neuron and then gets to the motor neuron so it's taking it's getting in by way it's getting through the dura that incredibly tough dura, the polio virus can't cross this. Absolutely not. But it can cross it within the axon of the motor neuron. So the polio virus is going to get back here and it's going to end up killing that motor neuron. So the motor neuron, even though it's a central neuron, has a certain peripheral vulnerability. Another type of neurotrophic virus is a herpes virus, and in this situation, uh, the virus prefers sensory neurons over motor neurons. It goes back, it, uh, it reaches this uh, primary sensory neuron, and it lives there, hopefully dormantly, but every once in a while, particularly during periods of stress, it may decide to re-erupt and go back out to the periphery. So these are, these are ways in which um, it, it's important to remember that there are peripheral neurons and central neurons. They have two different developmental origins, two different molecular signatures, but they have 
in some instances with the motor neuron uh, they, and the preganglionic uh, autonomic neuron, they have a vulnerability because part of the neuron is actually in the periphery, crosses through the, uh, through the dura and reaches the periphery. So now we're, we've set the stage where we can talk about one of the most um, uh, horrible scourges uh, of, of life, which is um, cancers that affect the brain. <laughs>